Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Nick. Today I'm going to be planing wood super thin using a planer sled. This project starts out with some scrap. I use some 3 quarter inch MDF because it's stable and it's nice and flat. That was going to act as the base of this planer sled. And then I just used some, again, scrap pieces, in this case pine, and I, I didn't have a piece wide enough, so I just used two pieces side by side. But the major thing to point out is you want the grain going in the direction in which you're gonna feed this through the planer because we're gonna be planing through these stops and we wanna make sure that the grain is going with the feed direction. And I was gonna offset that so that one of the edges, and I exaggerated it here, but one of the edges of the MDF was gonna be protruding past the stop block. That would make it easier to trim up on the table saw later. Then I just marked so that I knew where to apply the glue and I didn't have a ton of glue squeeze out and I could put the blocks in place just using a clamp. If you're using two boards like in my case, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that edge is nice and even and flush. If you have a wider piece, there's no reason why you can't use that. I just glued up two because they were sitting in the scrap bin. I even added a third clamp just to make sure that the boards stayed nice and tight together. You can also use thinner boards at this time, but I was going to use a scrap piece to plane this down, but I'll get to that. Then on my table saw, I just ripped off any excess material on that stop, and then also on my crosscut sled, cut it to length. Again, not necessary, but makes it a little bit cleaner and a little bit easier to use if you don't have a bunch of pieces protruding. Then just using a hot glue gun, and this was a scrap piece as well, basically just planing down that stop, and I fed it through my planer. Getting smaller and smaller. Like I said earlier, if you wanted, you could start out with a smaller piece. You know, th this took all of five minutes. Then just using a putty knife, I could pop the piece loose and clean up any excess hot glue. And you can see from this test piece, you can get pretty thin. And all I needed really then was a sharp utility knife to kind of cut it to length. And the most important part is that it's the same thickness throughout. And I was getting about 40 thousandths and it was nice and even. It had an even thickness throughout the length of the piece. Then it was onto my actual project pieces and I just took those over to the bandsaw and resawed those to approximately a quarter inch and then I could use those on my newly made sled using a couple dabs of hot glue. Then I could put the piece onto the sled and run it through the planer. You can see here from that stop, that stop is at our kind of final thickness. My piece needs to be planed down to that. A nice tip to set the thickness of your planer, put the piece through and make sure that you can move it back and forth and then lower the planer head itself. As soon as it starts to grab, then I just back it off one full turn. I could remove the wood, lower the planer head slightly, and then proceed into planing it down to thickness. And then nothing too exciting here. You're just basically running it through the planer, dropping that planer head until you get your desired thickness. In this case, I'm at a right, right around 40 thousandths of an inch or one millimeter thick, and that's what I'm gonna be needing for this. I should note that I'm using this on a 13 inch lunchbox planer. And that's actually a good thing because it's kind of showing the worst case scenario. If you have a full floor standing industrial four post planer, you're not gonna get a whole lot of planer head movement and you're, you're gonna be less prone to having any type of either snipe or tear out in you know, some of your softer woods like this pine. So if I can get good results on this planer, you can definitely get these type of results or better with your higher end units. Also worth noting, I did a lot of it on pine as well as I have a project coming up to where I'm gonna be using some maple. So it does work in your harder or softer woods. It just tends to work out a little bit better with your harder woods. Also, if the grain is straight in your piece and you're not having a whole lot of undulation to your grain, you're not gonna get as nearly as much tear out. And definitely having sharp planer knives helps out a ton. These don't have a whole lot of board feet run through them, so they're relatively sharp yet. As you can see, you can go pretty thin with this. I ended up, like I said, around 40 thousandths or about a millimeter thick. I did some in pine as well as maple. Maple's actually gonna be the parts that I'm gonna use for my next project. And like I mentioned before, this is kind of a worst case scenario. This is a 13 inch lunchbox planer. The planer head moves, I get sniped, so you're in a straight blade. So you're gonna get a little bit of tear out here and there, but I would say maybe one out of every 10 or 15 pieces is kind of garbage, but if you know that going into it and you start with straight grain stuff, 
you should be pretty lucky. Either way, it gets you out of a pinch because I don't have a surface sander or a drum sander. As of right now, it's been something I've been wanting to save up for. A lot of the theater, theater shops I do work for have those, and uh, I think that would come in handy with some of these thinner veneers, but as I shown, it's definitely doable on a planer. Um, you, you know, your mileage may vary, but I think it's worth giving it a try. Like I said, veneers and anything. And I actually do have coming up a project where I'm gonna be using this maple in a really kind of, I don't wanna give too much away, but in a really cool way to where you can get glue ups. Uh, not necessarily your own plywood, but I don't know, you'll have to stay tuned to see that one. And if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button on that bell notification, that way you get all the updates. Or you can go to nickferry.com for more information. Um, that's about all I have for this one. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Here. Nipples? <laughs> so what? <laughs> it's cold out here. I'm gonna get crap. Really? That's what people are gonna, they're like, oh wow, that's cool. Uh, different power tools, woodworking, little DIY. Look at his nipples. <laughs> this one's pine. Maple and mahogany. <laughs> As you can see, you can go pretty thin with this. Uh, right around what I said, 40. Right around what I said. That's what I said. Yeah, I kind of have a thing and then I just go into knock, 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 land. Good? Yeah. In the middle of the, in the video, I used the sound effect and I couldn't figure out how to get it. So I just went, True story. <laughs> Does that pick it up? Is it kind of cool? Yeah. I can't control it. <laughs> this is why I never get anything done. <laughs> All right, are we still recording? <laughs>